Hello, I'm Jesse with American Radon Mitigation. Today I'm in Bloomington, Minnesota. We're working on a house that was built in 1960, has a radon level of 1.3, and we're gonna do a sub-slab depressurization system. So I started this project yesterday, and I will finish it today, so I'll just kind of give you an overview of what we've done so far. So my first step was to drill my diagnostic test holes. So it's just a half inch hole, just like this one. Um, we've got several of them throughout the house here. And then we take our tubing for our micromanometer. We can plug that stopper into our test hole and that'll allow us to measure our pressure field extension or how far our radon system is reaching. So the key to getting your levels low is to engineer a system that creates suction under the entire house. So often on a house with subslab depressurization or a house without drain tile, we like to be next to plumbing because this is not virgin soil, there's settling that happened here. In this case, you can see that they've replaced the cast iron plumbing with this ABS pipe for probably a bathroom remodel. And you can see the new concrete here. So I peeled up some of these tiles so that I could seal this. But yesterday, when applying suction to my test hole here, I found that I wasn't really reaching the far back corner of the house. And I'll show you that. Um, so I was reaching everything else, but not back there. So I did a suction point here. We had an option for the customer for an additional suction point or stitching. And I took out 20 gallons of materials, applied suction to that using my pitot tube. So this allows me to mock up um, what a radon fan will will be like installed and kind of mimic that. So I could see how much air I need to move to get my target for pressure field extension. Uh, and I use this to see how much suction I need to apply and how much CFM or cubic feet per minute I am moving to achieve that desired pr pressure field extension. So then I can use my fan curve chart to plot those numbers that I'm getting to see which, which radon fan I'm going to use. And then the differential pressure gives me uh, a number of pascals here, that differential pressure, and then I can go up you know, say we had, I think we had 12 pascals there. So I can go to 12 and come up and over to my two inch line. And I had somewhere around 15 CFM um, to achieve my target pressure field extension for this suction point. So we still weren't reaching that back corner. So what I've done is add a couple of other suction points or stitching. So I'll show you what we've got done so far. Here's our numbers from yesterday. So our first suction point, suction point one, is here. And on my graph paper, we've got SP1, suction point one. And then we've got our second suction point, SP2 there. And that's tied into our stitching that I'll show you. Here's test hole three, the back corner. And that's the one that we were not really reaching. So you can see we've got positive numbers on everything. And in a perfect world, I'd like to get negative five uh, pascals in my furthest, weakest test hole when we're all said and done here. So I got this installed yesterday. That's our first one. It tees in there, and then this pipe runs up through the chase next to this and up into the attic, and I've got it stubbed up to the attic now. So it continues to our sex, second suction point, which is back here. And this one is going to be tied into our stitching. So we've got a bathroom here, and then they are replacing the carpet. So I can cut it all up, which is nice, so I don't have to restretch this. So our second suction point is right on the other side of the wall here. And then we've got our stitching holes. So it's just a series of five inch holes, cored a few feet apart. And over here, we've got our plumbing for the kitchen sink. So this stitching hole, we had all fine sand. And this hole here, when I got it dug out to here, I hit some settling. So that's applying suction there gets us to our weak test hole over there. That's our test hole three and the one that we're having trouble reaching. So obviously we don't want to run a pipe down to the middle of the living room here. So we've done the stitching. 
I've taken out 70 gallons of sand um, from this house and we've got a bedroom back here. So I'll show you where our pipe comes up through our chase here. So the nice thing about this route is you can't see it on the main floor of the house. So the chase for the B vent is right back here. So the furnace and water heater vent is right behind the wall here. And then our radon pipe is right through there. And you can often identify that because in this case, the back of that closet comes to about here. And then the edge of this closet comes to about here. So I've got all this dead space here. So that told me, you know, hey, this is probably gonna be a pretty good option on this house. All right, so my next step is to plug my stitching holes. So what I'm gonna do is put in, uh, drill the holes for my four inch tap cons, which is gonna give my concrete um, some support. I'm gonna put in the screws. I'll put in these uh, styrofoam plugs that I've cut to fit with the hole saw and then I'll mix up some concrete and fill all these holes in so that when they put their flooring back, um, you'll never know these holes were here and much better than a pipe running across the living room. So that's my next step. All right, now that I've got that done, I'm gonna take and put in my, this is just a two inch pipe. I've cut this to fit and it's gonna support my plug there. So I've got those all cut to length already. And you wanna to try to get about two inches of concrete when you're doing when you're using sacrete, so kind of adjust that accordingly. And then we can put these tap cons in. I like to have kind of bend them down so they're gonna be about halfway into that concrete. Now that I'm done with that, before I mix up my concrete, I've wetted this once, but that concrete cures a little bit better if uh, the dry slab doesn't suck all the moisture out of it. So I've just got a bucket of water here and I will kind of clean this edge up. Actually, I jumped ahead. I'm gonna foam this first to seal everything up. So I'm just gonna run the foam gun to plug the hole in the center of my styrofoam plug from the pilot bit of the hole saw that I used to cut them out. And then I'm gonna run a bead of foam around the edge. And I want this foam to actually make the seal because the concrete is going to shrink and pull away as it cures. And these Great Stuff foam guns are great if you use this foam a lot. You get a ton of control and you get a higher yield too than the cans.
just acetone that helps dissolve that foam. So well, now we're ready to mix up concrete. So mix in your sacrete. You want to add the water first. Cuts down on some of the dust. And this is just fast set concrete. It's about, I think, five bucks a bag. We'll see how close I can get to get, getting the right amount to cover my five stitching holes. I'd rather have a little bit too much than not enough. So that's what we're left with. I'll mix that up. It's just a mixing wand on my drill. And I put in a little bit too much water. So you can see it's pretty, pretty loose. So I'm gonna add some more concrete to that. And that's about the consistent we, consistency that we're looking for. Now we can go add this. All right, so I've taken my broom, dipped it in the water, and I've re-wet these holes. And now I'm ready to add the concrete. So I'm just gonna use my mag here. And add concrete to our stitching holes. And that foam has set up a little bit. So this shouldn't hurt anything. And we'll just get it close. And then when it's a little bit more set up, we'll use the finishing trowel on that. So you want to shake it a little bit so that you get, you don't get any air voids in there. Get that screw set in there. And then that tunnel comes all the way back and connects to this suction point. So this is our second suction point here. And that, this is what allows us to reach that back corner back there. Thank you. 
So this is where our pipe is stubbed up to. There is the B vent and our pipe is under this insulation and it comes up right there. So that's the chase that it comes up through. So now my next step is going to be to glue on this 90 right here. And then I'll glue on a stub of pipe and then we'll go right on fan and then we'll get our laser out to mark where we're gonna cut through the roof. So now I wanna secure this pipe. I think we're gonna do it in a couple of spots. We wanna make sure that everything is pitched back to our suction point so that the condensation drains. We're just going to use some of this webbing. Kind of a, reminds me of the material of a seat belt. Our pipe is back pitched a little bit there. I'll lift up on that and pull it tight. I can always adjust this if I need to. And then we're gonna get this guy glued on. Clean all that insulation away from it. Clean that fitting out. And I'll clean that pipe up. So we're gonna hit the pipe first. And this is beveled and chamfered, or deburred. I'm gonna wipe that condensation out of the fitting. Then we'll hit the pipe again. Ideally you would do this 10 seconds apart, longer if it's cold weather. And then the fitting one more time. And then if you can, you want to twist it about a quarter or half turn. And we'll throw our level on there. And then if I let go of it, it's going to have a tendency to pull back. So you want to hold it there for oh, 10 or 10 seconds or so. Then you want to wipe that excess glue off. PVC cement, I should say. Okay, that's ready to go. Now, I've got a chunk of pipe here. This will come up to the fan. Again, we'll get the Pipe first, then the fitting. And then we'll go pipe again. And fitting one more time. And give that a, about a quarter turn. Hold it as it sets. Wipe that excess. And then we've got a chunk of insulation for that. This insulation will prevent, help prevent freeze up. 
and prevent condensation from dripping on the off the pipe onto the insulation and eventually onto the sheet rock. So now I'm gonna run some of this web in from here down and back up to support the fan. And I wanna be just on the end of that fitting so that it doesn't slide off. Check my level there. Aiming for about a quarter inch. Level up a little bit more. And we go out it there. So that means that every foot of pipe, there's a quarter inch of fall. I'll check my other one, make sure that's still tight. Might have to tighten it up a little bit. And that feels pretty good. So our pipe is supported. Now we can mount our fan. So this is a Fantec RN2 EC fan. And if we pull off the cover, it's got that potentiometer inside there. So we can dial that fan in to exactly the pressure, to achieve exactly the pressure field extension that we're looking for. So before I put that on, I know that's gonna come down about Oh, an inch and a half. I like to mark that so I know how much pipe I've got sticking in this fern co here. So put that on. And the 5 16 nut driver works well. I'm just going to snug that up a little bit. We got that one tight. I'm going to take this top one off because I want to level that fan. So with it just being snug, I have the freedom to loosen that up a little bit and adjust it. And I like that. We'll tighten it up. And now, I've got to go back to the basement because I forgot the disc I'm going to use to hold my plumb bob on there. But that's all right, because I've got to get an extension cord to plug the fan into anyway. So, I'll be back. All right, I'm back. This is what I was looking for. So this is just a five inch cutout from a closet shelf, from a hole saw. So, we can center that on there, and then use my plumb bob laser, which casts this dot up and down and you probably can't see it, but I've got a little dot up there, similar to, you might be able to see it there, but we'll put that back. I'm gonna line it up on the center 
of this. It'll shine my laser up there. I'll take my marker and mark that. And that's where I'll drill my pilot hole. Use a plumb bob as well. I think this is a little more accurate. And then I've just got a quarter inch drill bit. Start at an angle and then dr drill straight up. And I do not want any of that stuff getting into the fan. I like to leave my bit there so I can see it easily on the roof. We're done with that. And then I did plug this fan in and check my pressure field extension numbers. I can't do that in the attic when I'm recording because I use my phone to Bluetooth to our micromanometers. But this fan is adequate and it is the one I want to use. So I definitely want to check that ahead of time. Um, it would stink to build the whole system and then find out, oh, that fan wasn't the right size. We needed a bigger one. Uh, so something to check out beforehand. So now the fan is creating suction and we're reaching um, all corners of the house. So my next step is going to be to go on the roof and I'll hole saw down I'm using my pilot hole and uh, then we can install a pipe so I can take and get my measurement that I need now. So I'm going to have a foot of pipe sticking through the roof. So I'll go to about 13 to account for the thickness of the roofing. And we want our pipe to be about oh, 33 inches. So I'll cut a four inch pipe 33 inches. I use four inch. Um, you'll notice that we use three inch on everything else. I use four inch when I go outside um, because it's less likely to freeze off or freeze closed when it's really cold out. That pipe will freeze from the inside out. Um, so a larger pipe is less likely to freeze when it's really cold out. So now I'll go cut that hole. Um, we'll slip that pipe in and then I've got insulation to fit over this as well. This customer did want a noise suppressor if the system was loud, I went down in the in the bedrooms, which are right below me here, and it was not loud. Um, you really got to listen to hear it. So rather than charge them for the noise suppressor, we're going to skip it in this case. Um, but this would reduce the noise by about 75% or so, especially if they had a deck or something right out here and it was a high suction fan or a fan that was moving a lot of air. And that's just not the situation here. So we're going to skip it and save them some money. So we know we want our pipe at 33 inches. We got a chunk of four inch here. So we've got a cut. This is a DEB4 um, from Reed. It's a deburring tool. We might put a link to this in the description, but it puts a 15 degree chamfer or bevel on the pipe. And then we've got this little Milwaukee uh, deburring tool. So this is used to get the burrs off the inside of the pipe. And that'll help make your dry fits when you're putting a fitting on there, they'll slide in a lot better. And then when we put our flashing on there, that gets rid of that sharp burr on the edge. So it's less likely to um, gouge that rubber on the flashing that we'll use on the roof. So now we can go cut the hole in the roof. I apologize for the bad audio you're about to experience. I didn't realize I had my microphone unplugged. All right, so we're up on the roof now. This is my drill bit that I drilled up from the basement. So we'll pull that out. got my drill here 
with a 5 inch hole saw on it and I'll cut my hole. I like to brace this really well because when it catches, it catches. Okay, now my pilot bit is bottomed out. This is a spider hole saw. I might put a link to this in the description. So we're done with that. Our fan is directly below us here. Some of that sawdust and stuff out of our way. And then I'll grab my pipe. So this is my 33 inch pipe. So I think that'll just help the pipe absorb some heat from the sun and be less likely to freeze. We'll paint the outside once we're done. So now I'm going to slip this over gently. This is where that putting that chamfer on helps. So it's not so sharp. Slide it down so there's about a foot left. And down here I've just got some insulation uh, on top of the fan so that the sawdust didn't get into the fan while I was cutting a hole in the roof. So I'll just get that out of the way now. shingles about a, a half inch gap around here so I've got the ups and downs marked and now I'm gonna eyeball across and see where to cut that one as well so now we can pull that out and I'll put that insulation back down so we don't fill the fan with granulars from the shingles Mark. Oh, 
cut on something like that. And then we'll loosen up these two rolls of cheese. Put the flat bar here. So we've got an edge here. Sometimes got another seam there. Should be good. I don't think we'll have to loosen those. Their flashing will come up to about here, and we can finish our cut. Let's cut out that curved portion. I'll see how we fit. And then I'm also going to run a bead on here as well. I'm sure there are several different ways to do this, but this is what a plumber, or sorry, a roofer. Slide this into position. I'll get the insulation out of the way. And that should work. I'm try to lift these shingles up. Okay, 
So I went down about an inch and a half into that rubber coupler on top of the fan. And that looks good. Let's square up the bottom edge here. All right, I apologize. I realized I did all of that without my microphone plugged in. So maybe we'll do voiceover for that, or I'm sure that was not good audio with the wind. So I apologize. So I was just saying, I've got this squared up. I've got my caulk around. Uh, now I can nail it off with some roofing nails. So this is a kind of cool tool I bought on Amazon. It's called uh, Shingle Shock. And it's got a magnet here, so it helps hold that roofing nail for you. And you can hit the top edge, and it's got a cutout for the shingle to go in. So I can replace those nails I pulled. Good there. Didn't pull any nails on that one. All right. So now I'm just going to put some silicone here to hold these shingles down. Since they won't stick anymore. We'll do both rows. I like to cover any nails that are exposed as well. All right, and then we'll get this one. We'll nail off the bottom. And one thing I like to do is put a little bit of caulk under where the nail's gonna go. Just for some added protection. We'll dry these off and then we will put a little dab of caulk on there or silicone. Clean up our silicone that's exposed or oozed out. We're good there. And now we're ready for paint and critter guard cap. Which is always interesting when it's raining or snowing. So here's the critter guard we're going to put on there. It's a half inch screen.
that'll keep any debris from getting down in there, squirrels. You want to make sure you use the screws provided to put that on. You don't want to glue it on so that they can replace, you know, take that screen off when they have to replace this flashing when they put a new roof on. Otherwise, they got to try to stretch a new flashing over that. And then I'll put a couple layers of paint on. Hopefully this doesn't blow right on my camera lens. So I'll let that dry and come back up and hit it again. But I'm done on the roof, aside from that and packing everything up. Now I'll just have to go in the attic to uh, level that fan one last time and tighten up that uh, rubber coupler so that we don't get any roof leaks. And then the electrician will uh, come, I think they're coming next week, and they'll wire the outlet and the uh, where the outlet and put in the light uh, in the attic and they'll also pull a permit for that. So now I've just got to go downstairs and kind of start cleaning up, do my paperwork. Uh, but that's about it for this one. All right, I am all wrapped up. I finished painting the pipe on the roof. I tightened up that rubber coupler in the attic, refluffed the insulation. The electrician will be here in three days to wire the fan. And uh, I can just give you a tour of what we've done and uh, the homeowner will be here in about a half hour and I'll explain how everything works to them as well. So I did put another finish on these stitching holes just to make them a little bit smoother. So the stitching is basically a tunnel underground that leads over to our second suction point in the mechanical room and it allowed us to reach that back corner and it actually helped us reach that corner as well as the first suction point uh, we were a little bit weak over there and not really reaching the other corner there. So our stitching tunnel ends here at our second suction point where the pipe runs up over this trunk line, ties into the T where it runs up to the radon fan and exhausts out through the roof. And then the other side of this T comes down to our first suction point, which kind of treats the front half of the house. We did do a backdraft test on this and it did pass. And I've got a radon monitor set up over here. We'll see what it's currently reading. 0 0.27. So obviously this is not an official radon test as the radon system's only been up and running for about oh, two or three hours now. I'm wondering if you prefer shorter videos or if you prefer longer videos with more detail and content. If you want to let us know in the comments below, I'd appreciate it. I'm Jesse with American Radon. Thank you so much for watching. One question I have for you is if you prefer longer, words are hard, if you prefer longer videos or if you prefer shorter, if you prefer, if you prefer